welcome to this new version and first iteration of my DIY remote control project. As I've anticipated in some video in the past, during the real world usage, I made some uh, a mixing section with the existing console version 0.1 that you can see here in all its glory. I have spot some element which were missing or in a way not effective enough. And so finally I decided to uh, work on a new iteration and a new version of the, of the console. Uh, I will be publishing a mini series of three videos. Uh, the first one is this one in which I will show you the new strip, which is where I made the, most of the change uh, in the uh, breadboard based uh, shape as opposed to the PCB one, finalized one that you can see here. Of course, this one is the old one, but this one is the new version. In the second videos, I will be showing you schematics and PCB uh, of this new strip uh, to go more into the technical details. And finally, in the third video, we will be testing and using the uh, uh, assembled PCB as soon as this will have arrived uh, in order to close the cycle. Before to start, as always, I would like to Kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel, to give a thumbs up to the video if you like it, and to hit the bell in order to stay uh, tuned. For the first time in this channel, uh, this mini series will be sponsored, as I had the opportunity and the privilege to be sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the largest PCB manufacturers on the market nowadays. Using the online site interface, you can easily get quotation for PCB manufacturing, for PCB assembly, and for any other service that you might require to complete your projects, such as CNC machining or 3D printing. For this project, I have decided to take advantage of the PCB assembly service, and I have to say that during the quotation phase, everything went smoothly, leading to an effective pre-order experience. So thanks so much to PCB Way. Let's get back to our project. First of all, let's analyze what's new into the uh, channel strip. There are basically two elements which are new. The first one is these three lines, this one. These are three inputs in the uh, microcontroller, which are uh, in the microcontroller configured with the pull-down resistor, so they are by default zero. And through this line, I can set it to VDD. When I do it, the, the input goes up and it becomes one. This mechanism is used to define the number of the channel because today, from a software perspective, the number of the channel is defined by a parameter which is inside every firmware, uh, which means that for every channel, I have to upload uh, a, a, the same time, the same version of the software, but with a different parameter. So I have, I have to make a specific upload. In this way, I can determine it in an hardware way, saying that when all these three lines are disconnected, uh, the three input are zero, zero, zero. And so it's channel number zero, which is one because everything is zero based. Uh, if I connect the first one to VDD, this will become one. And so I will have one, zero, zero, which is one. And so this will be channel two and so on and so forth until the three lines connected uh, like this to VDD, which represent one, 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 which is number seven. So number eight, which is in fact the, the the channel that I that I have today. This is a much more much more effective and efficient way to determine the channel number. The second new element in the circuit is here and of course here. In some previous video, I have highlighted that using the uh, the console in the mixing session, I found a little bit disturbing the fact that there was not the name of the track physically inside uh, each one of the channel. The name of the track is in fact present into the big display, but you know, from an ergonomic perspective, it, it was not very efficient, uh, this distance and the fact that, uh, say, physically they were not related uh, one each other. So I've decided to resolve the, the problem to add this display. I will add it one per each track and I will display the name of the track inside. As you can see here, we have Triang. And in fact, this is the number eight, the track number eight, which is named Triangle. If I move the bank here and I switch over uh, the first group of eight, as you can see, uh, this is not anymore the track number eight, now is track number 10, and the name has been updated to PS lead. If I go back again, as you can see, everything reacts and also the name has changed. 
Uh, I have chosen this display. This is a 0.96 inch. It's a quite common display. It's TFT color uh, because I mean, it's, uh, it's quite qualitative, it's nice. Uh, it's cheap and it has a quite easy integration circuit. It has a 13 pin interface. It is SPI, actually is half duplex at SPI, half duplex because uh, the need is to move data from the master to the, uh, uh, to the display, but there is nothing that the display have to say to the master. So it's just one data line in, one, in just one sense. Then of course we have the, uh, the clock line because SPI is a serial synchronous protocol. Uh, um, we have common data uh, switch line in order to switch and flag if the data that are going through the data line are commons or uh, data itself, content, let's say. Uh, then we have the chip select, which is not really needed in this setup, but is part of the SPI uh, setup. Uh, and then finally, we have a cathode and anode for the LEDs. With this simple configuration, uh, uh, you can easily uh, uh, set up the, the dis display and make it working. Actually, here, as you can see, there is something more here, which I have added in order to dim the light, the background lights of the uh, uh, LEDs. What it is? This is uh, a line, a PWM line coming from the MCU, of course which is connected into the base uh, to a, um, a transistor, uh, which is in fact connected to ground. So the whole circuit is connected to cathode, to the cathode of the LED. So what's happening here? Now the uh, LED is at maximum brightness, as you can see, because in fact here uh, we are going straight to the, the ground, cutting out the entire circuit of the PWM and transistor. But if I take out here this line from ground, there you go, you see the light of the uh, display goes down because actually the PWM is programmed at 50% duty cycle. And so it's mid uh, uh, intensity. It is enough to reconnect here the, and there you go, uh, uh, the, the connection to ground and you go back to the the maximum brightness. I think I will add here a page of configuration for each channel in order to allow the user to decide uh, what uh, the amount of, uh, of brightness that you want to have on the, on the displays and to limit uh, at, its, at its need. I, I have also eliminated uh, uh, these um, uh, uh, LEDs, so I, ke I kept only the power and the heartbeat one, which you still can find here. But all the others, which are the touch and the operation, say touch operation and TX and, uh, and RX for the UART has been eliminated. I kept only the touch one, which I reflected into the display. And as you can see, when I touch, you can see it now shown into the display. This is needed and useful also for uh, uh, for the bugging reason. Last but not least, uh, as you can see in the screen, there is a yellow uh, 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 square here. Uh, this is because in every track, uh, I will put a, a display with a different color and I will reflect the colors here. And this will help, I, I hope it will help in using, uh, let's say all the other layouts uh, typical of the um, Mackie control unit like for instance as you can see the uh, AQ and so on and so forth. Again considering that uh, I don't have a display which is spread across all the channel like it is in the original uh, Mackie control but I have a big one uh, which containing all the information these colors will help I hope in uh, uh, getting uh, let's say the sense of what is what respect to each channel. Uh, uh, just a, a last note, uh, uh, quite technical. Uh, uh, in the existing channel years, there is not implementation of a crystal oscillator. Here you can see that next to the uh, MCU, there is substantially nothing. These are the ones that, are, that are, are you seeing are just decoupling capacitors. I have implemented the 
uh, crystal oscillator here and it will be implemented into the final version of the PCB because uh, I'm looking for more stability on certain aspects uh, of, um, of the routine of the, uh, uh, of the channels. I think that that's all. The new uh, uh, strip will be reduced in size. Some of you made me some comment around this issue. Uh, will be shorter and will be uh, also shrinked in terms of, uh, of uh, length. Uh, and will be replacing all of this. Uh, for the moment I decided to keep the mechanical button, so I have not yet replaced uh, the mechanical button with the uh, elastomers, so the, uh, the, me the membrane rubber ones. Uh, I don't know if I will ever do it. I'm not very happy of the, let's say, flash and feel of this button, but I guess that I can improve this user experience just uh, uh, redesigning the caps and maybe putting some kind of guides here into the print in order to make more solid uh, the up and down cores of the, of the cup. So I think that that's all. Uh, next uh, video, as I announced, uh, we will be uh, uh, digging a little bit more into details, into technical details of schematics and PCB. Uh, uh, for the moment, that's all. Thank you very much. And once again, thanks a lot to PCBWay for sponsoring uh, this series of videos. Thank you.